Hey, and welcome to this technical breakdown of my level, Trials of the Insane. The restrictions for this level was to keep it at 1024 times 3 units, which is an evenly sized box. I had two ideas from the beginning. I could make a squiggly map with floors built vertically like a typical corridor shooter, or I could make an arena. Both are used frequently in the main game. I decided to go for the squiggly map first, since this was my first interaction with the editor trench broom. Dimensions and metrics were unknown to me at the time, so I did my homework and learned the theory. The dimensions are based on player eye level, height, step height and texture size. I was not satisfied with the results, no matter what I tried. I felt that the events felt too rushed, enemies were too close and all in all it gave too big of a feeling of claustrophobia. I therefore threw away my free white box levels I had made and opted for the arena concept instead. I started with a top down of a square. I first thought about doing it as a circle, like the Colosseum, but after figuring out that the playable space would be much smaller in the shape of a circle, I decided to keep it square. When working, I always keep a sketch pad and coffee close. I like to sketch out different ideas as they come along or I want to try something else. Maybe I get inspired from a picture or I have an idea in my head and then I just scratch it down on paper. I also like to create a factory level where I cre create specific structures, I try out textures, light and I try different things separate from the main level. This is only to keep the workspace decluttered and not have all the different things going on in the main level. I also make a Trello board to keep track of progress. With the size restriction, I decided to go for three floors of verticality. The player would start on the first floor, which is the bottom floor, and after picking up weapons and, uh, and armor, like in an armory, the player would ascend to the second floor. The second floor would be the main gameplay area, but to keep things interesting and give the player freedom to move around, a third floor was also available at the time. After early playtesting with the first scripted encounters, the third floor was cut from gameplay. This is because the AI and pathfinding was lacking in hunting the player down, so instead of going up the stairs and follow the player, they opted to run inside the wall and continue running there where the player was. This ruined the gameplay and would be very easy to cheese, which would kill all the fun in the map, so the stairs had to go. The gameplay is the most important aspect of this level, and it increases in intensity for every wave. The player is facing progressively harder combination of monsters, the most basic combat mechanic of Quake is to move in circles to bait monster attacks and avoid projectiles. This will naturally occur in a tight area since the player can't take cover behind static objects, and therefore I just needed to focus on getting the player to move. The first wave consists of easy monsters that spawn straight in front of the player. Two knights, a hell knight and a crossbow on the second floor. The two knights have low HP and do very little damage, the crossbow shoots a ranged projectile attack and the hell knight is kinda a tank with high HP and moderate damage. But he also has a ranged attack that he sometimes will use against the player. This introduces a couple of things. First, enemies will shot you head on from the get go. Second, ranged enemies will be on the high ground where they have the best position to shoot at the player. Enemies in Quake, they do friendly fire, so placing ranged units above the normal ones will reduce the amount of times friendlies take projectiles to the back. After the first wave, the player is rewarded with health, ammo and a weapon upgrade. These pockets where the enemies spawn are perfect spots to put down ammo and health that would otherwise clutter the gameplay area. The player will have just enough time to pick up their reward before they get attacked again. This is to keep the momentum of the fight up the entire time, since the combat is just one large sequence of waves. The second wave is to let the player play with their new toy, the upgraded shotgun. The third wave, this time focusing purely on ranged enemies, but with different behaviors, will solidify the need to move for the player. The fourth wave is once again a combination of enemies, much like the first wave, but with tougher opponents. Homing projectiles are also introduced. Before the fifth wave begins, a brief break will let the player catch their breath and collect themselves. After a few seconds, traps will spring up through the floor and two saw blades will begin tra to traverse the floor. We are raising the stakes for the player because they still need to move around to not get hurt, but now they will need to watch out for the blades as well. 
The fifth wave begins with flying skulls called Lost Souls. What they do is that they hover above you, shriek before they attack, and then they shark into you and explode. The player will have to listen for the shriek and move accordingly while simultaneously dodging the saw blades. To spice things up, two high HP monsters with homing projectiles are also joining the battle since the souls are moving so slowly. This is stressing the player to the max, thus we will have to end the level shortly. After the fight, two more waves are coming, before the end. I introduce a slowly moving platform and switch on a red light to frame it. When the platform stops, a miniboss, in this case a minotaur, will spawn. The player can shoot it down or make it get cut up by the saws by baiting it into the same direction. It's the player's choice to use the environment. After the first minotaur is killed, the platform will move down and another platform at the other part of the room will start to rise. This is priming the player to look for the platforms and expect an enemy once it stops. The same monster will spawn at the second platform. The original idea here was to have a different monster called the Shambler, but it turned out to be too hard for the specific environment. After the second Minotaur is dead and the platform lowered, the player will expect the third one to rise. However, now all the four platforms will begin to rise, which will trigger a feeling of desperation for the player. It's now against all odds. The best position to be in right now is in the middle of the room, because that is equal distance to all the other platforms. To make the final fight more about rewarding the player and have a wow moment, I spawn an invulnerability power-up, making the player not take any damage for 30 seconds just before the enemy spawn. Thereafter, 16 enemies spawn and jump the player, which is on the extreme. But, since the player cannot die, they can now just wreak all the havoc they want, feeling greatly empowered. After all the enemies are killed, the teleport opens and the player has completed the arena. Short, simple, but high quality.